Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Reds Report. I am Chris Ridyard. No Carlo van der Watering. He has uh, he's training in his orange colour for his uh, he's all white. He's currently cricket training. However, I have enough people alongside me who know a bit about football. Uh, they've lived the Barnsley dream this season. They've been there, done that, got the t-shirts, taken the photograph, and talked about it. We have photographer Keith Turner. You're right, Keith. Sam, Chris, yeah, all good. Nice all to good. see you, buddy. Are you on yeah, there? Good. Have you got a friend in there or? Um, well, I've got Whitey. Oh, <laughs> 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 what? Yeah, oh, so his, his tea's fallen out again. I'll put him down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're only a minute in. We also have a former Barnsley FC player, uh, the man behind the, well, the, the man who teams up with Matt Bailey on a, a regular basis and is also a manager of a non league. Uh, just tell me the team again, Wayne. I've got it written down 1874 somewhere. 1874 North. Am I right in thinking you are joint manager? I am, mate, yeah. Spot on. And, you're, and, and I'm right in thinking you're back busy again. We are, yeah. Back training, back playing. Got a pre-season game this Saturday. So, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be starting 5th of September, our, our campaign, hopefully. So, your Saturdays have just got better. You've traded in and Matt Bailey for, for back, back to real football. Nothing can ever replace being alongside Matt on a Saturday afternoon, I'll tell you. <laughs> Also, oh, we have really clear for account, pal. Fifty on it. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> we have uh, best-looking man, Barnsley, nineteen eighty-nine, and the man behind the voice behind Barnsley FC. Okay, it's running, pal. Ninety as well. What's that? What's that, mate? <laughs> I, got, I, uh, I held on to the trophy as well in nineteen ninety. So two years like, back to back. Two years running, yeah, I mate. didn't know that, pal. I didn't know I that. I like to boast about it, you see, but. I'll add it onto your Wikipedia page after this. Mate, nice one, pal. Mate, All right, okay. <laughs> How you doing, Chris? All right, mate. Yeah, nice to see you. Right, lads, we've had, we've had a few days. The dust has, has finally settled. Uh, just thoughts, Matt, starting with yourself. Just just thoughts on just the season as a whole and, and that, that last day, that last minute, effectively. Let's just bring it it's all been, together. Yeah, it's been incredible. It's been an absolutely incredible season. I mean, it was a fairy tale start, fairy tale end, wasn't it? Um, Probably a bit of an horror story in the middle along the way, but you know we got through it. And scenes like that at Brentford—that's that's what you do the job for. You know what I mean? Them players came of age on uh, on Wednesday night at Griffin Park. Superb performance. Obviously, everything's up in air. Nobody knows what's happening. Players were celebrating. They're staying in Championship as far as they are concerned. Amazing to see them. You know, there's so much camaraderie in the in that in that squad. Yeah. And they've matured so much, that bunch of players over the last few months. And they've had to do it because it's, it's such a steep learning curve. Um, but obviously, things are still grey areas. There's Wigan and their scenario, which hopefully will just be a formality when, uh, when that goes to appeal. I think it's on 31st, isn't it, next Friday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's crossed, I think, in Barnsley until then. Uh, Wayne, yourself, you've uh, been to a lot of games this season alongside Matt. You've sat in the in the commentary booth. Uh, I'm sure that's been a real pleasure for yourself. Uh, yes. Does that Barnsley team deserve what they got? Well, it does because you know Matt and I spoke about it uh, after the game on on uh, on Wednesday. That, you know the table doesn't line. All right, you say well we finished third, but the fact is another team have broken the rules and. Everybody knew from day one what those rules were and what the enforced punishment would be. So, so there you are, you know. And I think for, for us, for the last two games, to have, you know, that task in front of you, to win the two games and just do your part, was a big ask. You know, it's not, it's not easy that. When you look at, I mean, I'm not even sure how many times this season, if any, we've won two games on the trot like that anyway. Um, but to go out and do what you needed to do and then obviously you get a little bit of luck elsewhere or, or you know, you you have that that happens with, with Wigan potentially absolutely fully deserved the, the biggest thing for me I mean you're just talking there about how the season went Matt. I, I think the biggest thing for me was that people learned as, as they went along you learned from mistakes you know um, I think of Anderson in particular you know, he made a lot of mistakes early in the season and people were on his back and you know we, we, we criticised him a little bit I think quite rightly but he clearly learned from his mistakes and that's all you can ask as a coach and that, that's one of the things that the managers will be really pleased with that no matter what he's done with them, they've they've kind of learned lessons and and, and grown up. You know, as Matt said, they've become of age. Just to 
uh, breaking on you there. I always do that on commentary anyway. Don't I? So, yeah, it's all right, mate. But, um, yeah, with Mads, he's had that reassuring arm around his shoulder since Michael Solbach. Oh, well, since game, so, well, again. Yeah, that's I mean, again, a massive, massive, massive help for him, hasn't it? So, yeah, yeah. And, and again, I think that's something that we spoke about in commentary earlier in the season a few times when those mistakes were happening, not just him, but other people. Or, or we'd say in the games, didn't we, that we start to get a feeling that we look a little bit edgy, a little bit nervy. Um, and it needed an experienced player alongside him, not just in the games, but in training as well. And and that's, you know, there's no coincidence in that whatsoever, none whatsoever, that you've got a, an experienced player in, an experienced defender. And that's probably been a big factor in, in, in the whole of the defensive effort for the last, what, 12 games or so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith, uh, Wayne just talked about people getting better there. Uh, you've been at Barnsley a long time and you've taken some wonderful pictures and, and, and caught some great moments. Uh, do you think you've got better this season or has there just been more to take photos of? Because there seems to be some, some great pictures. Uh, you, you can only photograph what's in front of you, Chris. Um, and, it, and if it's not in front of you, you can't capture it. You can't, you know, it's just one of them. Um, I'd like to echo what Wayne and Matt's just said, actually. I'm glad you picked up on that regarding Mads. Um, I wasn't really a big fan up until Christmas and I think he deserved to be dropped. Um, bringing what we've all been crying out for there with Michael Solbauer. And <clears throat> he's just blossomed, didn't he? And I think that, and um, playing in front of no fans, um, his confidence, oh, crikey, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been great to see. And for such a young lad, for somebody like we all have, we've been in football for ages in different varieties, Different capacities, but take away that to see to see a young lad who is he twenty one maybe twenty twenty one to see him getting booed off at pitch. You know that that don't do anybody's confidence any good, and I'm so pleased for him because obviously seeing players behind scenes, you know, he's he's a genuinely lovely, lovely, nice lad. It, it wouldn't it wouldn't harm a fly. He just ain't got it in him at all. And to see somebody shouted at and screamed all of that is not nice. So when you see him play these last nine games and arguably be his best player, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's fantastic to see. It really is. It's, it, it'll do us great for starting next season. You know, if, I doubt that we're going to have fans there. But when the fans do come back, they'll probably realise that you know, give him a break every now and again. When he comes down that tunnel first game that fans are back, pal, the yeah. reception will be amazing for him, and rightly so. I, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, Matt. We, we've had some, there's been some players, I mean, Jack Walton, for a start, I, I was surprised when I saw a team sheet at QPR. I mean, I want at QPR because of um, what we're going on, but I, I, were, I were amazed, and I was amazed with a lot of the team as well. Ramal Palmer, Elliot Samoas and I thought oh crikey what's happening here and, and you know what it's football isn't it you know manager, manager knows he's yeah. still uh, again, again we spoke about that a couple of times in commentary about you know the thing with young players is that they have no fear and they'll be actually desperate to play in the games regardless because they want to try and carve a career out and get a chance to play in the first team so yeah. you get a probably at least 10, 15 games where you just go out and play and you've got no, you don't care if you make a mistake because you've, you've not been used to that pressure. So you just want to go out and enjoy it. So I think that was a, that was probably a, a, a real good, good move by the manager to put, just, just put them into play, just say go and play because they're not carrying the scars of, of what's gone on in the season. Yeah. 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 You're right, Wayne. I mean, Matty Wolf coming on against Forrest the other day. It's terrific, no? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I always try and, when we've got, when we've got a new player, or we've got somebody who's making a debut, all the time getting running on the pitch, taking a photo, blah, blah, blah. And at the back of my mind, I couldn't tell but thinking, is this the right time to bring him on? But then again, I thought the other side of the coin, it is because mm. we've done it so many times, these last half a dozen times. We've, we've, we've taken a gamble with Callum Styles. He's been brilliant, hasn't he? He's been mm -hmm. great. I mean, that, that on Wednesday, what, if he plays a, as well as that for next... Two seasons, I'll be amazed. What a game he had. He were, he were head and shoulders in that midfield. He were brilliant. Mm. Yeah. But we've, yeah. we've got to blood them sometimes. And I think if you've got to blood these young uns behind closed doors, then really it's going to be to our benefit, isn't it? Mm. Exactly. Mm. Exactly that. Uh, Matt, you... Stuber for having so much faith in his young players and giving them yeah. that opportunity. Yeah. 
were an absolute cauldron, wasn't it, last nine games? We, yeah. We, yeah. You know what I mean? Every game were of vital importance. And he has just put them young lads out there. He said, do your stuff. And, and like Wayne says, the play we are for you. So mm. they don't feel that weight of expectation on the shoulders. And it will have benefited, benefited them, the fact that the stadiums were empty and they could just concentrate solely on the football. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and Matt, um, you take big pride in, in the fact that we've got a, a lot of young players. And they do feel like they're our own, a lot of these players. I know some of them have come up via database or statistics and in lots of different manners, and some have come from under-23 teams. Um, but still, we take good pride in our players, don't we? It's been such a... It's been so nice to watch them grow. And I know we mentioned the last nine games, but I feel like that growth started when Struber came in, didn't it? Talking to me, pal. Yeah. Yes, Matt, I am. I am talking to you, pal. <laughs> right, pal. Yeah, I didn't realise. Um, yeah, I mean, good, like, like I said, I think Daniel Stendhal, we loved him, obviously. We had a lot of respect for him. Uh, he was held in high regard by most Barnsley supporters, I would have thought. But when he left the club in October, um, we, we, I'll be honest, I had no idea who Gerhard Struber were. No. He'd, he'd done a great job, obviously, in Austrian Bundesliga. He'd beaten Gladbach. Uh, with Wolfsburg as well, in your Europa League, and then he came in, and you you noticed straight away. I think he kept faith with um, sort of experienced players for a while. Then he realised he he had to change things around. You know what I mean? I think Stendhal were a little bit loath to do that. I don't think he wanted to put any pressure on his young players. But Schubert's come in, and the guidance that he's he's, he's given those teenagers and players in their early twenties has been absolutely invaluable and it's paid dividends in that final nine games after lockdown uh, obviously we've had one blip that 4-0 at Stoke but apart from that the performances have been right up there with with the best of the teams in the championship haven't they yeah, yeah. I mean the last, the last two performances and again we said it Forest and, and Brentford just very few things you'd look at that as a coach and go well I wasn't quite happy with that or that didn't quite work out the approach from, from the manager the way he set his team up in both games was absolutely spot on but you can only do that if you've got the players to carry it out and, and his players carried it out for him yeah. do you know the other thing with the, with the younger players as well What and you mentioned about the um, no fans there don't forget as well they're kind of used to playing without spectators exactly. so it's a Bobby, different Bobby dynamic that on commentary as well. it's a yeah. totally different dynamic Twenty-three yeah, scenario, yeah. yeah. so they, they're used to that they're used to you know yeah. sort of a few people watching or whatever or, or playing in the in the in the you know, junior sides and stuff like that. So you, you've come from that fairly quickly. So no real big change for them for there. So again, that's just a psychological thing that you might have put in there and thought, you know, that they'll come off with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, just... Sticking with art fans then. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, listen, maybe, you, wanna, maybe you want the fans there. Yeah. 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 No, you want the fans there to play. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. I know. So, such a strange environment. Uh, Stretch, you often, uh, when Barnsley have a big moment, you're often in amongst it. Sometimes you do get clattered beat by players or fans it must be weird for yourself you know you must be looking around you know <clears throat> the Forest game you know the Brentford game if you're only at Barnsley and at that point you're, you're ready to get elbowed in face are you not? Uh, yeah I, I am and I must admit talking to a mate of mine yesterday and he says how, how did you how did you how did you keep your cool and I must admit on Wednesday you know you, you know when they're celebrating in the corner flag for second goal I want nearly on jump me. on. I tell you, I'm far off. If I don't got all the cameras around my neck, I'm telling you, I want nearly on. How good would that have been commentating on that, Matt? <laughs> There's been, Keith uh, jumping on. He would have never lived it down. That is. <laughs> <laughs> there were a guy outside of me, Dave, another uh, photographer down there who I know well. Uh, and I just shouted to him, I said, uh, well, I can't swear, actually, obviously. And I just, <laughs> I'm going on, pal, here. I said, give us my cameras. Uh, and we, we've been chatting about it because he was actually a Brentford fan. Uh, and he had, you know, there were a lot riding on it from his point of view. Um, so obviously, a lot riding it from my point of view. It, it, was, it was good banter. And it, I think he appreciated the fact that we'd played a lot better than Brentford. Well, he did. He said it at full time. Yeah. And that we yeah. deserved the win. And we did. Absolutely. We did deserve the win. Absolutely. And Brentford, you know, what a golden chance they've had. They've, well, they've had last three games, really. They've had a few golden chances. Uh, and they've not took them. So... That's just how it goes. And we, we have took them. And I know we lost at Leeds. 
but we didn't deserve well. to lose at Leeds. No, no, well. and, and we only got a draw at Luton, and we 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 should have won that game. We are shattering a doubt. <clears throat> so I think these last nine games, we should really we shouldn't have been in that position at Brentford, desperate for a win and waiting on other results. We we should have got four, five, six extra points because we deserved them. We really did. Like you've just said, we lost 4-0 at Stoke. We were poor that day. In fact, we were rubbish. At half-time, I thought, we're getting nowhere here. It doesn't matter That's what... That's the only one in it out of nine where we've looked poor. Where we yeah, well, you take that, yeah, Matt. You take that. Yeah. Because every now, yeah. every now and again, you know, you teams come out of the starting blocks. They drift, didn't we, so... Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, keep trying to keep the um, emotions under control. I can guarantee you that full-time, I'd, I'd lost plot. Um, <laughs> I went down into the bottom corner and it was me that organised the team photo for them all to come over and then obviously all photographers come following because they know what I'm trying to do we weren't allowed on the pitch because we were in the amber zone if if I'd have gone on the pitch then crikey I would have been in big trouble there yeah. it would have been funny though wouldn't it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Wayne it, it keeps just alluded to missed chances so to speak you know we're not getting a point at Leeds and we've seen it so many times this season. We've, we've been on top for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, not, make, not made it count. Mm. What, what is it about that Barnsley team? What, what, is it, you're in football, so you'll, you'll, uh, you'll be able to put your finger on this better. Is it, is it the youth that's helped us to, to really have we live with naivety? And has that naivety helped us? You know, because sometimes you can get inside your own head and think, well, we're ruined missed chances here. We've missed that chance. We've missed this chance. And, and then you kind of think that things are spiralling against you. So is it, my question to you, is it naivety or is it mental strength or is it a bit of both? I think it's, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a cross between the two. And, you know, as daft as it sounds, any coach or manager will say to you that you look for the performance first. Of course, you want to win the games and you want, you know what points you need and stuff like that. But if you take the last nine games as, as a sort of, you know, microcosm of the season, like I said, I think they learned some lessons. I think probably the break did them really good. To when they came back, they got some clear ideas on what they wanted to do differently, which was great. He decided what he was going to do with the younger players. But then he's probably looked at, though, if you look at those nine games, you would say that the performances on a whole have been really, really good. As good as, as much as said before, as good as anything in, in, in the league. Uh, I mean, the amount of teams that said, oh, you shouldn't be down there, and fans I saw on social media, oh, wow. Leeds fans saying, you're the best side that have come here this season. So he looked at that and thought, well, as long as I keep getting that performance level from the players, then we've got a chance. And they did. You know, like I said, they, they came to those last two games and it couldn't have been any tight, let's be honest. No. You know, you're looking at that going, well, we have got to get two results. We, we were there on Saturday for the, for the Forest game, sat there going, well, hopefully we get something today to take it to the last day and then that's the least you can ask. And, and you know, the, the pressure of that is both enormous, but also as younger players, like I say, you just think, I just want to play. Um, you know, Callum Styles has waited for his chance for probably 18 months or so. You know, we spoke about him in commentary last season. Um, and he'll have, been, he'll have been thinking, just get me on there, let me play. Same with the other young lads, just let me play. And, and I think that's something that clearly, like I said, the manager needs big credit for because he'll have seen that in training. He'll have seen that around the place and thought, do you know what? I can just go with these guys because mentally they're, they're going to be right for it. If they don't get the performance, that's a different thing. But you did, yeah. you know, you got, you, got, you got some really good performances. And those last two, especially... You know, the Brentford one for me was terrific because the, the tactical approach was, was brilliant. Just absolutely spot on, you know, to keep Brentford quite... I know, I know we've made... The keepers made two great saves in the first half, but on balance of play in the first half, we said at half-time, you wouldn't have been... You wouldn't have looked at that and thought, we're bottom and they're top. No way. Yeah, we went into that game with no nerves or anxieties about it. We knew we needed to win it. Brentford looked the team... But they needed to win it, didn't they? And they couldn't. Yeah, they like Keith, Keith, they Keith just said they couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah. They couldn't. They couldn't handle that pressure. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we saw a couple of lads, Brentford fans, didn't we, on way back to the car park after the game? Yeah, said, all we had to do was take advantage of the fact that West Brom didn't win on Friday, and tonight's match wouldn't have mattered. Results. The, yeah. the thing with the Brentford players, again, we spoke about. If you looked at little things in the game. You started seeing after 20 minutes, one or two of them throwing their arms up in the air, little arguments going on, little bits of things, you know, Janssen getting a little bit ragged. Yeah. Our lads yeah. didn't, they just, whatever went against them, they just got on with it. And when, and when Brentford scored, that was their best 10 minutes of the game, five minutes before the goal and five minutes afterwards. Our lads just kind of weathered that and didn't that fall apart, didn't argue. That, 
Yeah. That five minutes after that is no. It, earlier on in the season, we would have probably would have crumbled. Yeah, exactly. Would have exactly. Gone on. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But that yeah. shows and that's the lessons. The resilience that yeah. Stuber yeah. has instilled yeah. into his players since yeah. we've really started after lockdown. I think yeah. another one as well, Matt. There, you're saying about crumbling. We might have crumbled if Brentford had got a full crowd in as well. Yeah, I think that was a factor. Good point. That, yeah. I mean, I, I, I sit at, at both ends, and I know you, you guys sit at middle, but it no matter where you are, it is intimidating when you've got a full house and everything's riding on it. And Brentford, they're not like other teams in like, I know there are local rivals, but Wednesday, Leeds United, given 20 minutes, half an hour, same at Sunderland, same at Middlesbrough, same at Newcastle, they get on the back. They yeah. get on the back and start yeah, going. Definitely. Brentford aren't like that. A lot of Southern teams aren't like that. They give them a lot more patience. They'll give it till half time. Well into the second half. Then, then things start getting tetchy. But, that's what happened that, at Fulham when, when we beat them. Definitely, but yeah. Fans, yeah. fans yeah. were patient. Then in second half, they gave yeah. it. You know what I mean? They got on the backs. And... Yeah, yeah. Could have been a different. Could have been a different game actually if the fans. Mm. But yeah, hey, they were all there, so that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you just mentioned Fulham. Um, would you put that down as the as the most pivotal moment that you've you've commented on this season? If you were it's to, it's an high point. Both both games against Fulham, home and away. Uh, Real high points for a, for a team who's made it to playoffs and for a long time looked as though they would be automatically promoted to Premier League. But looking at the overall complexion of the season, most of these nine games, especially the final two, where they've been won in such dramatic fashion to help us stay in second tier, they're, they're the ones that we're always going to look back on. But there has been some fantastic moments. QPR at home just before Christmas, that 5-2, yep. that, that were absolutely sensational as well the, the high points have been few and far between obviously but it makes you appreciate them more yeah I mean the, the late goal yeah. on day, we had a late goal on Boxing yeah. Day didn't we a yeah. late goal against yeah. Derby they're, they're absolutely endless is there anything that's we've never out? saved a team we might not have had the quality at times but we never can be questioned for shortage of effort and no, that's held us in good stead coming back after lockdown it really mm -hmm. has Mm. Yeah, yeah, arguably probably one of the most entertaining seasons we've had at Oakwell, and there's been a, there's been quite a few. Uh, Wayne, what would you say were more pivotal moment for Barnsley if you were to try and put your finger on it this season? I, you just mentioned. It. I think the Fulham one was a big one because at that stage we're probably I don't I don't know how many points we're adrift or, or whatever. But at that stage, if you go there and get beaten heavily by a team that's as good as they are, and I think Fulham are, are, are a good side. I think they'll do the. I think they'll win the playoffs. If you go there and get beaten by them, that could have been a real, real blow from a, from you know talks about and that's why everybody, everybody were expecting that as well. Of course they? they were. Of course they, they were. The form yeah. Of course they were. Of course they were. But it, but again, it's not just the result because you, as daft as it sounds, you can get fortunate results like that where you win the game well but you've not played played well. It, the performance was good. Yeah. And and I think again that's something that you know as, as a management team they have gone. Listen, we can come here where nobody expects us to win. We can perform to this level. We can do this, you know, week in, week out now. We're going to have some blips, of course we are. We're going to lose some games. We're not going to play well in other games. But generally, if we get that level of performance, we, we can have a go at this. And I think that, that, was a, that was a big one for him, a real big one. Yeah, yeah. At stretch yourself, when you, you know, pitch side, any, other, than, other than Fulham, which uh, Wayne's mentioned uh, and the stuff that Matt's mentioned, any, any pivotal moments that you can see that you recall? Um, for me, Chris, best two matches of the season, what, first and last? Right, okay. In, in, in between, you know, Fulham away and Q, like I say, Q power at home when one five two, a cracking performance that. But the best two matches for me were first and last matches. Forest at home uh, the other week, another brilliant effort. But it comes down to pivotal moments for me. Stendhal leaving, uh, I never saw it coming. I never saw it coming, and that was a pivotal moment because it doesn't matter who who are coming here. Neil Neil Warnock, whoever had come to Barnsley, they would have had a great job on. Yes. Because you've got to get to know your players, haven't you? And mm -hmm. nobody knew nothing about Struber. We didn't know nothing about Stendhal. We didn't know nothing about Marais. <sighs> Crikey. It's a gamble, isn't it? It's yeah. a gamble yeah. from management side, from director's side, from fans. Do you know how you're going to take to him? Uh, it's come yeah. across well, though. It's come across well when I've, I've listened into him. And I ain't spoke that much to him, but when I have, he's very courteous and he's been a very nice bloke. So, pivotal moments for me, 
yeah, Stendhal leaving. I, bit of a shock. I, didn't, I never saw it coming. A shame, actually. I think it was a shame because he was a cracking blow. He took to town well and he took to our... Um, I think he took to community well as well. He really he really took us under wing and, and we, we joined in with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, next next pivotal moment for me, and it was something that we were so crying out for and he was signing Michael Solbauer. That, yes, that, that's a good one. If, if we'd have not got him, then... Crikey, we, we, I think we'd have been cast adrift a long time ago. Yeah. He yeah. saved us a lot of time, and I felt so yeah. sorry for him when he scored that own goal at Leeds United. What He definitely did not deserve that. He's had some right performances. He's made up for it since then, hasn't he? Yeah. He, he, he he has been, been, in yes. Burton, there were very little he could have done about yeah. it. To play, and do that. came at him facing his own goal. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you can't. I, I agree, but I mean, there's been some cracking performances. Sol Bauer's been up there, Jack Walton, Callum Styles. Yeah, there's been some great performances, really. So, yeah, thing. pivotal moment. You mentioned Jack Walton. He's been an absolute revelation, and since he's been recalled yeah. to the starting line. And for me, he should have been given his chance a lot earlier because he's never done anything wrong when he's been selected. No, no. no. Another big moment, that the save at Luton. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, he had, a, he had a lot to do at Brentford as well in the first half that Wayne alluded to that earlier. Mm. Wayne, this board, rightly or wrongly, uh, have took a lot of uh, uh, daggers. Uh, they can only take credit for the employment of Struber, uh, changing the tact a little bit in January, bringing in Saul Bauer and, and, uh, and uh, you know, his, his other Australian player, Ritzmeyer, that he brought in as well, who some are still sitting on fence with. They can only take credit for that for the employment of Struber and bringing those to him, can they not? Well, they, they have to do because if they don't bring them in, then then who knows what happens? You know, you, you, yeah. somebody else might have had the same results, but you don't. But I think I think the point you made there about kind of bending a little bit and, and allowing experience to come in because I, I know what the model is and how it works and and, I, and you kind of see where they're going with it. I understand that to a degree, but to then actually go, well, do you know what? And I'm sure the manager was going, look, this is what I need, and he's probably yeah. been saying he was probably saying that from very early on. But yeah, to to then go, well, okay, we'll we'll kind of bend that and, and we'll go with it. I think that's they deserve credit for that without it. I know listen, fans are always gonna be never gonna be happy if, if they put billions in, they'd never be happy. They want more billions yeah. putting in. That's just how it is. But ultimately, you know, I, I think the big thing now what where, where you're talking about where where they will get some credit is if there's a thought now process where they sit down and go, right, let's learn from the mistakes we made last summer. Let's look at what we do need to make sure we're not in this position next year, that we're a good solid side with a a chance to progress again and, and build because that, that's all you can do as a, as a club and certainly as a manager you want to he'll want to improve on what he's had this year and if he doesn't get that then he's got a decision to make on, on what he wants to do about him quite rightly of course it's going to be a massive a massive month or so off the pitch for Barnsley yeah, huge. just as it's just huge. been a massive massive month on the pitch so we've got 10 minutes lads we'll wrap up uh, we'll just talk about favourite moments so Matt your favourite commentary moment this season he sat at side of Wayne or he sat at side of somebody else want to one of your other presenters, what, what sticks out in your head? Where, where are you up off your chair and where are you shouting and screaming, Matt? Well, it's always a pleasure to sit outside of Wayne, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to get that in. Well, yeah, um, probably Corley Woodrow's second goal at West Brom. I, I enjoyed that one. Uh, it was a terrific team move and an absolutely sensational strike as well from about 20 yards out. And then obviously Clark. I don't know if he were offside or not. I was hoping that uh, my pig Miles off. By, a, by an offside flag, but obviously we just went for it myself and Wayne and <laughs> doubted and screamed and celebrated wildly. But yeah, what what a moment that was and what a time for both them players actually, for Styles and Adore to score the first ever professional legals. Absolute scene, sensational stuff. Loved yeah, it. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yourself then, Wayne. Uh, other than other than what Matt's just said, you know, Clark Adore <laughs> moment and the Coyle Woodrow. Yeah. Just, just there, Matt. You mentioned Coy Woodrow. How many big moments has he provided us this season? You know, if, I think that is it that volley against Charlton, which unbelievable yeah. stuff. I, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah when totally spectacular, weren't they? To be fair, uh, he showed a lot of character as well because uh, he's been dropped obviously for the last couple of games. Brave decision once again by Gerard, but obviously in hindsight, right decision, and yeah. he, he came came on. And he put as much effort as he normally does in for the last couple of games. Hopefully, he's going to be here next season, but who knows? Who knows? Mm-hmm. When yourself? Do you know, my, my, mine's a different one, I think. Uh, and, it, and it's literally, it's from the other night, but it's, it's after the game. And it was, um, 
Matt and I walked down and, and stood at the side of the pitch there. The, the lads were all on the field. It, it was quite a weird because they came out and they clearly weren't quite with it. They were just wandering around the pitch, sitting down on it. And I just looked at them and thought, you know what? I, mean, I know it's a million miles, years ago since I last played, but those moments, those euphoric moments that they had there, I was so pleased for them because that's something they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And no matter where they go in their careers, and, and they will, they'll all go off in different directions. It could be 20, 30 years down the line and they'll bump into Collie Woodrow, bump into Callum Styles, and they'll go, they'll just look at each other and they'll go, remember that night. And it's just a great feeling. I, I was just so pleased from the other night. Just from an own personal point of view, as, a, as an ex-player, to go, I kind of know what you're going through there and in, enjoy it. Absolutely enjoy it. It was great to see you, wasn't it, Matt? It certainly was. I, I know Dane has, has said today we are going to be a championship club no matter what. Next season, yeah. there's always that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind that the Football League might make the wrong decision mm. and overturn the uh, relegation of uh, of Wigan, which hopefully that's not going to be the case because you mentioned it earlier. They brought the rules, the rules are set in stone and if a precedent's set, then it's going to open the floodgate. Oh, so worms all over. To yeah. abuse the system. So yeah. Yeah. They've, got to, they've got to make the right decision and yeah. I, I can't see any reason whatsoever why Barnsley won't no. be on the championship again next season. Of course. When, when, is that, when, when is that going to... Um, next what Friday, we're going to do? 31st. Is it? Yeah. I think there's a wet... Will, will there be making a decision on Wednesday's possible deduction as well? Yeah, oh, I think that's, that's yeah. it as well. And, and keep it yourself. That would mean uh, Charlton stayed up as well, wouldn't it? If, if Wednesday got deducted. Yeah, away. yeah, yeah. Charlton would step up one. Which mean all the three promoted teams would be playing in the championship again next season. If you brought the rules for me, you deserve to go down. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I yeah, prefer absolutely. Wednesdays to stay up though, Matt, because we want to take six points off them next season, don't we? <laughs> So it's well, guaranteed. Yeah. That's never going to happen. Well, the QPR game, so it'll buy three just in case anybody pulls us up as they like. To do. <laughs> <laughs> that's been the QPR at all. <laughs> and keep listen, yourself. That, that listen, that get Charlton down. That drive down there is a right pain in the ass. So we've no way. Have we as well? So yeah. Get, keep, get, keep well, get them the butties. The butties are nice, though, okay. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> Keep yourself. Be honest with you, Chris. Favorite, I, I, favorite. I, 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 we'll go different with you. We'll go favorite photograph for yourself when you think back. Something uh, that I captured. And I thought this season, and I think that is that. That um, is the that's the one well, this season. I, I was going to say actually, uh, regarding moment. Okay. A cracking, mo a cracking moment was when Jacob Brown scored at Fulham and uh, celebrated straight in front of me, arms up. Would it call it Woodrow? Put him through for it. Yeah, it might have been. He just hooked yeah, it. Down a, yeah, yeah. That were a that were a belting goal. I was sat in front of Reds fans. They they went bananas, and there were lots of my lads over there who, who play football with my lad, and, and they were all celebrating. there. brilliant because if ever a game we were not going to win, it was that game. We, you know, they were flying high, weren't they? Flying high, Millwall, and we were down in dumps. And to come back from any London game with three points, and to be honest with you, we hammered him. Mm. He's, he's brilliant. It's, it's, it's a great feeling. It makes our job worthwhile. We've had, we've had them days, Matt, and we've come back from Gillingham and Portsmouth and Bournemouth and, and wherever we've been, and it's been a long journey back. And M1 shut it, wherever. But we've, we've had them days. But I, I will say that just before we leave, I think... My personal opinion, since we've had lockdown and we've brought in, we've had these last nine games, we've blooded these new young lads. I think, I think we've got the basis of a team like we had four years ago when we, when we got rid of Winnow, Bree, uh, Roberts, uh, Orain. We've got some players in that team now who I think can be the basis of a very strong team for a few years to come. I think we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think we've got a good spine. I think there's five or six players there, I think, are young. They're in the championship next year, so they're going to obviously learn from it. They're going to get more experience. I, I think the future's bright. I really do. Yeah, fingers season crossed. The got behind them is invaluable to them experience-wise. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. When you've mentioned that numerous times, throughout that they've grown so much, lads. I'd love to talk all day long. We've got, we've got a minute or so left. Uh, Wayne, thank you very much for for giving your time no up and joining us. Really appreciate Enjoy it. it. Nice to see you. You as well. Enjoyed it. Good man. Keith, nice to see you as always.
Cheers, Chris. Sorry, sorry for being a bit late. I'm on um, chicken Thai curry. I was making tea. I completely lost track of time. I apologise nice. for that. No worries. Me and Matt will come up with a, a, an appropriate punishment later, won't we, Matt? 